now we got everybody in group. I knew you were in town. I saw you on that route today. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was in the This regular meeting of the Board of Mayor and Aldermen for April the 16th will come to order. I'll ask you to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm going to ask you to remain standing for just a moment, and let's bow for a word, a moment of silence in honor of the victims, in honor and in memory of the victims of the tragedy involving the Boston Marathon. Will you bow your heads? Amen. All right, uh, we have a public hearing scheduled now regarding uh, Ordinance 1304. This would rezone a three and a half acre tract to the corner of Childress Street and Central Avenue from R7 Residential to MH2, which is a mobile home park. This is being done at the request of its owner, Wayne Briley. Is there anyone in the audience who may, wishes to make a statement in regard to uh, this issue? Hearing none, the public hearing is closed. The next item on the agenda is 1.3, and that's the approval of the minutes from the regular meeting of our board on March the 19th. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. A second. Any discussion? Hearing none, if you favor the approval of the minutes, will you please say aye? Aye. Opposed, no. So ordered. All right, now to the legislative portion of the agenda. 2.1 is in regard to uh, Ordinance 13-02. This is the third and final reading. It establishes a permit fee schedule for mechanical work and rescinds ordinance 9-04 in its entirety. Is there a motion this be considered on third and final reading? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Please call the roll, Ms. Watson. Snyder. Aye. Carneal. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Sneed. Aye. Head. Yes. Ellis. Aye. Mason, right. past 7 to 0. Okay, uh, 2.2 2 is in regard to ordinance 13 03. This is the third reading also. This ordinance would amend the city's conditions <coughs> of service manual by amending the section entitled gas and rescinding certain policies in their entirety and substituting new ones. Is there a motion? So moved. And a second. Second. Any discussion as this is about to come before third reading? Please call the roll. Head. Yes. Carneal. Aye. Snyder. Aye. Mason. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Ellis. Aye. Sneed. Aye. Pass seven to zero. All right, next is 2.3. This is covering ordinance 13-04 for which we just had the public hearing. This is a second reading and rezones a three and a half acre tract at the corner of Childress Street and Central Avenue from R7 Residential to MH2 Mobile Home Park at the request of its owner, Mr. Wayne Briley. Is there a motion this be considered? So moved. So moved. Second? Second. All right. Any discussion now? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I sort of made a statement last month, and I'd like to track that, comparing the mobile home as being an eyesore to that church. Ms. Ellis All caught right. me on it, so I want to retract that. All right, sir. Well, I think this is uh, something that is being done. It's in the best interest of all concerned, and it seems to be a, 
to be a needed uh, proposition. Is there anything further regarding this item? Please call the roll. Ellis. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Sneed. Aye. Snyder. Aye. Carneal. Aye. Mason. Aye. Head. Yes. Aye, seven zero. Okay, now we are moving on to 2.4. This is ordinance 13-06. This will be a first reading. This amends Title VIII of the Municipal Code by amending Chapter 2 entitled Beer and by rescinding Section 8-211 entitled On Premise in its entirety and substituting a new Section 8-211 entitled On Premise. Is there a motion this be considered? Move for approval. Is Second. there a second? Second. Mr. All Mayor, right. point of order. Yes, sir. On a motion that has been uh, voted on mm -hmm. and failed, would it not be the preliminary procedure according to Robert's Rizzo order that the, that the prevailing side would be the only one who could um, make the motion to renew? I'll ask our attorney. I, I was asked to look at Robert Rizzo's order about this, and I don't pretend to be an expert. But at a, at a later meeting, I believe anybody can re, can bring the motion up again. At the same meeting, it has to be a prevailing party, but at a, at a later meeting, it can be anybody. Okay. That's the answer I'm going to. I was okay. the last All right. Uh, this is a first reading and will still require being uh, read in its entirety by our city uh, clerk. Ordinance 13-06, an ordinance amending Title VIII of the Springfield Municipal Code by amending Chapter 2 entitled Beer by rescinding Section 8-211 entitled On Premise in its entirety and substituting a new Section 8-211 to read as set forth in Exhibit A attached. Whereas the Board of Mayor and Alderman desires to give the Beer Board authority to issue on-premise beer permits <coughs> for exemption from the requirement to, me, to maintain a minimum distance from church or school to otherwise fully qualified eating establishments located within a specified area of the old downtown that includes the square and adjacent blocks. Now therefore be it ordained by the Board of Mayor and Alderman of, Spring, of City of Springfield, Tennessee as follows. Section 1, Title 8 of the Springfield Municipal Code is hereby amended by amending Chapter 2 entitled Beer by rescinding Section 8-211 entitled On Premise in its entirety and substituting a new Section 8-211 entitled On Premise to read as set forth in Exhibit A attached. Section 2, all ordinances, resolutions, and policies in conflict herewith shall be rescinded to the extent of the conflict only. All right, you've heard the reading of the ordinance. This uh, was brought up last month. The re result of that of the action at that time was three votes for, three against. It failed. It's being brought up again. We have a full board tonight. That night we had a six-member board present. Tonight we have the full group here. Is there any discussion now on this issue? <clears throat> Paul? Mayor, I thought it might be uh, useful to once again state what the actual amendment to the code is. Under section uh, two, this will add a last paragraph and the specific wording, just for everyone's information, it adds a paragraph that states the minimum distance requirement of this subsection shall not be applicable to otherwise fully qualified eating establishments located in the core area portion of the Springfield Central Business District, which surrounds the historic Robertson County Courthouse a National Register property located in the CC Core Commercial Zone and further described <coughs> as within the area bounded on the north by 5th Avenue West, on the west by South Locust Street, on the south by 7th Avenue, and on the east by South Willow Street. Okay, now any discussion on this matter? Yes, uh, Mr. Sneed. What is the uh, definition of fully qualified eating establishment? <coughs> Well, what you're saying is they meet all the requirements of normal beer, normal beer sales. On prem, it says here under on-premise, all premise, on-premise permits shall not be issued except to eating establishments that possess eating capacities for not less than 25 persons and where hot meals or lunches are regularly served and where food revenue makes up at least 40% of the gross sales of the business. The premises must be regularly inspected by the State Health Department and have the permit publicly displayed at all times. 
The premises must be equipped with adequate toilet facilities and hand washing facilities, including hot and cold running water for use by customers. So that is what a fully qualified on-premise permit holder would, would have. Other questions or comments? One. Mr. Mr. Ellis. No, I just wanted to say, uh, and I guess you get into something on court, uh, you know, fully qualified, but I think we're opening ourselves up to get some things in, in the city that we can't control. I mean, we can control it from a police standpoint, but about who's going to come. Uh, if somebody wants to put a restaurant, and we're not, we're not going to know whether this, they're serving 40% food or not, I don't think. I don't know how we can. But anyway, I, that's, uh, that's the, one of the big problems I have with it, is I think we're opening it up and we can't close the door. Mr. Mayor? Mr. Albert? Under the condition of permit, I would like to look at A. The premise is declared to be a public place for the purpose of inspection by city inspectors, by officers of the police department, or by any other duly authorized law enforcement officer. So they are going to be checked to make sure that they stay within accordance to what they're supposed to be. So this gives us the safety zone. This gives us a safety net to make sure, to make sure that nothing trashy or anything of poor taste or demeaning, and I hear what you're coming from, but this will this will sort to hang it off, okay? Gotta, gotta keep that from coming because we're gonna definitely be checking. In, in all, all of those institutions that you're talking about are are being inspected today. They're just somewhere on another block. They can pick up and they can come here. We can't tell them, you know, what to serve or, or we can say 25 people, 25 seats or whatever. But what you everything you you mentioned there is being done today all over Springfield. Uh, so it'd be no different. One a restaurant somewhere uh, half a mile from here can come downtown. But what I'm saying is the restaurants that we that we're talking about, we're, we're putting this, and this is our vision, to have them on the same line with Old Charlie's. We're making sure that they're in compliance. But you can't do that. We're, we're making sure. That's okay. right. You know, question. drunks and everything else can't be coming out of there. You know, uh, uh, nuisances can't be created within that. Miss Lee, I'd like to point, make a bring out the point that uh, we also inspect stores that sell packaged beer and we in, we increase the distance requirement for this due to a location that was just down the street from a church in Willie's district that was so out of control the only resolution to it was to increase the distance this was at Mr. Mason's request in his district now that store had the same inspectors, was, was under the same rules as all the other stores, but you couldn't control it. You had to increase the distance, wait till the tenant moved out. I'd like to bring that up, a little history of why we've got a distance issue today. Uh, may I deal with that one? Uh, that, Snyder, that was in the- Wait, Ms. Snyder had her hand. Okay. I, the public hearing or the public forum we had here in this room, I can't remember the gentleman's name that spoke from the state. Um, I think they're doing this in Columbia, they're doing it in Gallatin, and I, if I remember correctly, it would be like picking up Torino's and moving it up on the square, or the depot moving back and opening another location. Uh, I don't think any of us want to see uh, an out of hand business, but I think that it's the best for the city if we do allow restaurants to come and we keep those tax dollars at home instead of going down the ridge. Franklin has that as well, Franklin, which is considered to have the probably very good the best point. downtown of yeah. any of the areas that it throughout North Tennessee. Mr. Aubrey, you have I, I need first. some clarity on the history because, you know, I keep the history. First of all, that place of business was in what we call our nuisance kill zone. Secondly, drug trafficking and everything else was run out, run out of that particular place. Thirdly, killings 
occurred across from that place. Fifthly, all your major drug hustlers were out there. So, so it wasn't only the beer permit, it was because it was in that area that was designated a nuisance to society, understand me, criminal activity, killing, totally de degradation to the community and to the city, and we shut it down. All That's right. the history, Mr. Oh my Stanley. God, I didn't know we were living in the ghetto down here. Mr. May. You've been sleeping, I know. Oh, uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of history, Mr. Sneed. Well, uh, uh, I, I would like to say that the on-premise, the off-premise, uh, you're doing two different things. It's it's not a restaurant. It's anyone can go in and buy beer or alcoholic beverages, and the problem in these neighborhood issues is the fact that people are buying these things and hanging out. That is not what you're allowed to do with an off-premise beer permit, and that's why they became nuisances. You're talking about restaurants here. Now, I must say, we inspect the off-premise uh, businesses every so often as part of the beer permit process. We don't really do, I can't remember ever auditing a restaurant as far as uh, their sales, but I can tell you that everybody that's got one is a viable going restaurant in town, and I don't think the question's ever been asked really, are they, are they selling 40 percent, are they selling 50 percent, are they selling 35 percent? Uh, everybody knows they're well-established restaurants, so the need to go in there and necessarily do that is a little different than someone walking in to check to make sure the, the clerks are not selling to underage individuals. Other comments before we? Uh, yeah, uh, <coughs> wait, wait, wait just a minute. I'm gonna take this here and then I'll get to over here. Well, what is the, what is the distance from this, uh, from the form that had all the distance to the churches before? Uh, what is the distance of this uh, courthouse cafe to the nearest church, you remember? Is it like 150, 200 feet or something like that? Well, I think we handed out some distances at the last it meeting. Last, last I'm Gina, sorry. did you have that? That's that's a requirement now, right? What, I mean, it's what they, at one time would be measuring, like when we measure from the, uh, the square over to one of the, the churches. I, I, would, I would be more in favor of reducing the distance rather than making a special overlay because you're, you're making something special for a certain group of people in a certain area that has no restrictions to distance. And the, the distance requirement was increased, I think, was it 350 now? It's three, three, 300. 300? 300. Yeah, Where it, it used it, to be, three, what, 150 or two? It is the regular distance. It was two, and it went to three. And you got 300 <laughs> foot distance. Uh, you said this, the place now is 300 feet from a church. So what was the issue with that location getting bare? And it's and it's closer than 300 feet to a church. It was either right at 300 or just a little less. Than the, the, the two churches. Is instead, such. instead of opening up the whole square, I'd, I'd be more in favor of amending the motion and just reduce the distance requirement to 250. You're welcome to do that if you choose, Mr. Mason. Speaking of uh, <clears throat> the church you talked about, well, the the footage going up to 300 feet. We've had a church move right across the street. We had to ask us to make special provision so they could open my church up, which is right across the road. You're from, talking at 11th and Main. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And we made provision for them to do that. And that that was not a provision on alcohol. That that prop talking about Crabtree Furniture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That property was not zoned for a for a church. Period. We well, that came well, before us know. for for a waiver to let the church be there. Period. Yeah. I made the amendment because the depot uh, restaurant was in my district. Yeah. I was looking out for the interest of of a constituent that if they ever wanted to expand, it wouldn't be an issue. That's why the alcohol was brought up in regards to the Crabtree being. Uh, allowed to non-conform allow have a church there so if they did they had to agree not to be an issue if the depot wanted to expand that was 
I remember that because it was my motion. It wasn't default, I don't think. It's the one across the Well, he no, was the, ta the, taco. the yeah. taco place. They yeah. they, but he is were, correct. He, yeah. he is correct in mm -hmm. that uh, uh, okay. reference to the default in, but, in case they want to make a motion and reduce that's the business less requirement to be done with. feet or three hundred, whatever you want to call it. Okay. All right, you're making, you want to make I an amendment? amend the motion that it, instead of the change of ordinance to overlay, just reduce the distance to 50, let the place have its alcohol and not open up the entire square of every little cubby hole in the square. All right, we have a motion. Is there a second? I second that. I didn't hear you. What, a second. I, I did. what does that do for us now? Uh, two, 200 to 250. What's, what is there church, anything close to any of the existing rest, residents, uh, restaurants? There are no existing. There are no existing. Really okay. Do we have a resolution on record? And I know we've said this that if a church comes in here and he and they take a storefront and they make it the church, uh, then from at some point we they waived the, this uh, yes. mm -hmm. this this distance. Uh, was I don't know when, what date that was. Well, we but did that. If anybody comes in. Now, it, the distance doesn't matter anyway. But let me let me point that out to you. If you look on on premise number two, and you'll see the next to the, well the last paragraph, no on premise type permit shall be issued authorizing the storage, sale, or manufacture of beer within 300 feet of any school, public or private, daycare, park, playground, or church, as measured on a straight line from the nearest point of the school, public or private, daycare, park, playground, or church to the nearest point of the building or structure where beer is store, stored, sold, or manufactured, excepting that this provision shall not be applicable to the renewal of any existing permit outstanding as of September 19, 2006, and with the additional exception that there be, shall be no distance requirement between a permit location and any church that has been granted a conditional use permit within the CG commercial general zoning district. That means a storefront. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, are there any other statements or comments? We've got a motion and a second on an amendment that would change the distance. Repeat your motion, Mr. Smee. Your uh, amend the, motion, uh, amend, the your amend, amend the question on the floor to reduce the distance requirement from, if correct, 300 feet to 250 feet to allow that one particular location. Well, close that. Reduce the distance from 300 to 250 feet. Make it just that simple. Okay. All right. You've heard uh, Mr. Sneed's amendment. Are there any questions about? Okay. I need one clarification. It's just for that one location. Right. I mean, that's. Are that's you correct. saying it's just for that one location? Or the fact that that feet. is the, is that because that is the issue it's saying person is applying for a permit there the overlay was proposed as a solution to the problem which would allow others to open it more or less let this be a free distance thing but he's saying keep the keep the present laws in effect but reduce the distance from 300 to 250 which would, al would allow it to work for that one location that gives us a chance to see how it goes if it does what it says it's done we can always come back and revisit this issue later but we're going to let this one try without opening up the whole Pandora box of the square. All right, you've heard the uh, amendment. Are you clear on the amendment? No, sir, I'm still not clear. He wants to change, rather than he's amending what is before you today, to address it in a different way, saying that with regard to that one place where there is a contract on that property where a gentleman wants to come in and run a restaurant, and serve alcohol, that the, that the distance requirement between that parcel and the nearest church would be reduced from the present 300 feet to 250. I'm not but like, that location, I'm not Mr. That Smith, location. I'm, talking. I'm talking about, oh, I'm sorry. So, you understand now? It's just that with regard to that one location. So if Burdett wanted the, to do it, the they motion. could. The motion was to reduce the distance requirement completely just period. that one period, period. with regard but you're doing it because of that okay 
It All wouldn't right. be that lump specified variance. That'd be a variance to that lump code. I'm just reducing the distance to 350, yeah. period. Yeah. Right. Distance that is now 300 would go to 250. Yeah. And that's all. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. Is everybody clear on that? Yep. All right, we're going to vote now on the amendment. Hubbard. Uh, Is there a second? Yeah, no, Mr. Ellis there. Uh, <laughs> point of order. Please. Ask your question. Okay. This is the overall. No more 300 feet. Yeah. 250 mm -hmm. feet. Yeah. Overall. Okay. I guess I'd try to work with that 50 feet. I would say I. Snyder. No. Carneal. No. Oh. Carneal. No. Sneed. Aye. Head. Yes. Ellis. Aye. Mason. No. <clears throat> Pass four to three. All right. Now you have the money. So Mr. Balter, you go ahead with the full motion now. It'll be the motion as amended. As a minute. Motion as a minute. All right. You're ready for the motion as it has been amended. Mm -hmm. Any questions before we vote? So we are voting on the 250 now. We're voting on the, yes, that is exactly right. Okay. Because that has altered the whole picture there. Okay. We're voting on 250 for what now? Well, for the the, the proposal that is before you, this and ordinance, amendment. is changed by this amendment. And you're voting now on the ordinance as it has been amended. It has been amended. It changes the complexion of it, if you will. And, and instead of granting... You want to add something? There? Well, go ahead and finish, Mary. Okay. Instead of there being no restriction in that boundary between 7th Avenue, 5th Avenue, Locust Street, and Willow, which is what the motion said, the original proposal says. It's going to simply say that all the rules and regulations stay in place, as I understand it, except that the distance is changed from 300 to 250 between establishments and the church. But didn't we just vote that the initial 300 feet had been changed to 200? To 250. 250. 250. 250. Right. That, well, that still allows the restaurant to do what it wants to do, but you're not opening up every cubby hole in the square to do it. Yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll allow see. some of these that we turned down that was free and was less than, uh, less than 300 feet. The only, that's in. the only locations they ever wanted alcohol in but, square. But if they do well, that then, doesn't then we mean, can look at it later. That doesn't mean you won't have others. You see, the difference is before you were open to get up to any location within that boundary, okay? Now it's being restricted to the, the restriction is still in place but changed from 300 to 250. The proposal, if it had not been amended, opens it up, period. Any place within that uh, boundary can have can serve alcohol. But the way this is amended, the effect is that that blanket privilege is supplanted by a 250-foot rule. Now, that's what you got. Now, yeah. Paul. Mayor, it would simply, just for everyone's edification and clarity, that uh, it would take the proposed ordinance and strike the proposed paragraph. So when you're amending this, you're going to strike that and you're going to change the distance from 300 feet to 250 feet. That's what I believe you're doing right, yeah, Mr. That's Sneed. Correct. So you make, make, the, make the amendment one sentence. Reduce the distance requirement for establishment to serve alcohol from 300 feet to 250 feet, period. Period. All right, now are you clear? Willie, I'll be glad to add to that if you're still... Let's see. You had a proposal that, if passed without, without this amendment, would have allowed any restaurant, anybody meeting the requirements there, so much food being served, all that type of thing, you would 
have allowed any restaurant to locate within those boundaries. 7th Avenue being the south boundary, Locust Street the west boundary, 5th Avenue the north boundary, and Willow Street the eastern boundary. You open all of that up. Now, if it has amended, what you have is the old rules changed by 50 feet from a 300 to a 250, rather than being wide open, if you will. This, if it passes, is a 250-foot rule. Okay. May so, I yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Gina, I, I was hoping you went and checked that distance. Is that what you did? Good. What is the distance from the area in which they're talking about? Don't know how much it is. I, I, thought, I thought it was 211. Well, okay. We, I mean, not 211. And what about the church that's behind it? I don't know what they check. I don't know the distances they check for sure. All right, Mr. Nutty. You were, you were given all that information last week. There were like seven or eight churches in the area. They measured them in the square, outside the square. So you, you just have to refer to that. I'm sorry I didn't bring it with me tonight. Okay. Hearing nothing, we're going to vote on the motion as amended. Carneal? No. Head? Yes. Sneed? Aye. Mason? No. Snyder? Aye. Ellis? Aye. Hubbard? Aye. Passed five to two. Okay. Motion as amended has passed. We move now to two five. And that's the first reading on ordinance 1307 regarding fees for city cemeteries. Will you read that please, Ms. Watson? Ordinance 13-07, an ordinance establish, establishing the schedule of fees for city cemeteries by rescinding ordinance 09-14 in its entirety and substituting a new schedule of fees as set forth in Exhibit A attached. Whereas on September 15, 2009, the Board of Mayor and Alderman passed Ordinance 09-14, which established the schedule of fees for city cemetery. And whereas the Cemetery Commission of the City of Springfield recommends a new schedule of fees for both Elmwood Cemetery and Oddfellows Cemetery. And whereas Article 4, Section 13 of the Charter of the City of Springfield requires that the establishment of fees and charges be accomplished through legislative action, which must be exercised by ordinance. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Board of Mayor and Aldermen of Springfield, Tennessee, as follows. Section 1. The schedule of fees for both Elmwood Cemetery and Oddfellows Cemetery is hereby established, established by rescinding Ordinance 09-14 in its entirety and substituting a new schedule of fees to read as set forth in Exhibit A attached. Section 2. The schedule of fees set forth in Exhibit A attached shall become effective July 1, 2013. Section 3, all ordinances, resolutions, and policies, policies in conflict herewith are rescinded to the extent of the conflict only. We didn't get a motion, did we? No, sir. Okay. All right, is there a motion on this ordinance? So moved. Second. All right, any discussion tonight as it faces first reading? Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, sir. On the uh, schedule of fees, I uh, did some research on this and uh, uh, you, I'm sure everyone here is aware, but uh, the cemetery is subsidized by about 80,000, if my calculations are right. Uh, the uh, subsidized by the taxpayers from what they take in in revenue. I think that the price per lot is below value compared to uh, the area competitors in the same business, or business if you call it, or selling stain product. I think I'd like to raise the, uh, since we are at a deficit and tax, taxpayer subsidizing two and then three, we're below market value in selling the lots. I'd like to increase the lot price from 500 to, to uh, well, our near, nearest competitors, Memorial Gardens, which is 1,000. Uh, Specifically, what do you propose? 
that we increased the lot price from 500 to um, 800. And on odd fellows? I uh, don't think there's much issue there, but uh, I'll go ahead and make an amendment and increase, increase odd fellows from 300 to 500. You've heard Mr. Sneed's amend proposed amendment. Is there a second? I would have to support Mr. Okay. Sneed second. Okay. All right. We have an amendment that would adjust this schedule by increasing the amount for a lot at Elmwood from $500 to $800 and a lot at Oddfellow Cemetery from $300 to $500. Any discussion now on this amendment? Yes, sir. He is, he is, he is accurate. And uh, I had a family friends that was buried over the last month, and they were very surprised at the chief cost in comparison to other other areas. So I think we need to get within the market, and I think it's very reasonable. All right. Any discussion now? If you would favor this amendment, vote aye. If you oppose, vote no. Snyder? Aye. Carneal? Aye. Hubbard? Aye. Sneed? Aye. Head? Yes. Ellis? Aye. Mason? Aye. Pass seven to zero. All right, we're back on the main motion. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Mason? Aye. Ellis? Aye. Sneed? Aye. Carneal? Aye. Hubbard? Aye. Head? Yes. Snyder? Aye. Pass seven to zero. Okay, and now we're on resolution 13-11. This is your item 2.6 on your agenda. This res is a resolution for the city of Springfield to accept the Robertson County Hazard Mitigation Plan. We have a copy of the resolution. Is there a motion? Move for approval. And a second. Second. Any discussion now? Paul? Mayor, this is a very thick volume. There's, that's why there's no exhibit to this. Uh, we, all the city consolidate, uh, all the city plans are now consolidated into a county plan for state law. And so this will simply, as each city ratifies this, this will allow this to be submitted to the state. And I believe Mr. Ellis has reviewed our, uh, the uh, plans that we had in our own city plan and they've been transferred over to the county plan. All right. Any further discussion or comment? Please call the roll. Head. Yes. Carneal. Aye. Snyder. Aye. Mason. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Ellis. Aye. Sneed. Aye. Pass seven to zero. Okay, 2.7. Resolution 13-12, this would declare certain property as surplus and authorizes the disposal of such. Is there a motion? So no. Second. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Ellis. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Sneed. Aye. Snyder. Aye. Carneal. Aye. Mason. Aye. Head. Yes. Pass seven to zero. Okay, now 2.8, resolution 13-13, which authorizes the issue and sale and payment <laughs> capital outlay loads not to exceed $453,880 pursuant to the informal bid process. Is there a motion for consideration? So moved. Second? Second. Okay, Paul, do you want to say anything about that? Mayor, these are all uh, taken from the uh, budget uh, some of these are a little less money, some a little more, but overall we're, less, we're <coughs> issuing only one note. We had planned to issue a, uh, actually two notes, one of six years having to do with the financial package uh, for the city, the computer system. We did not uh, purchase that system this year. It'll be in next year's budget. So uh, we've converted all the, uh, all the notes in every fund to four years. So it's, it's one note but every fund will pay for its respective item in that note. Okay. Discussion? So there, excuse me. Go ahead, Mr. Taylor. So that's, that's general fund, utilities, every, everything that we borrowed, I mean, most everything we borrowed. Yes, it's all, in, it's all in one. We could do it this year that way, and four years is a very short payback and seems appropriate in this case. We don't have anything 
any particularly large items. I think the largest item was around uh, fifty thousand dollars. Other discussion? Please call the roll. Carnell. Aye. Head. Yes. Sneed. Aye. Mason. Aye. Snyder. Aye. Ellis. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Pass seven to zero. Okay, we move now to the administrative portion of the agenda. Item 3.1 is a report from the Robertson County YMCA on the after school program uh, involving Springfield Middle School students, which we are helping support. And we'll hear now for a spokesperson from the YMCA. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, Courtney Woodard from the Robertson County Family YMCA. I'm the team director at the Y. Uh, reporting on the after school program. Program is going great. Uh, like I said, our pants are coming up a little bit more. Uh, less fights, less cussing. So the things we are doing in the program is starting to work. Uh, I had a volunteer tell me today that she can just see the difference in since uh, November 5th from to today. You know, the kids are being more respectful. Uh, they are not as easy to pick on one another as they once were. So we are making a difference. And uh, the past two weeks, I challenged my kids to uh, learn the Lord's Prayer. Half of them hadn't even heard of it. Probably more than half hadn't even heard of it. So uh, I told them if this was a rap song or something they wanted, they would learn it. So. I told them if you don't do it, I mean, you can't come back and attend. So uh, my kids are still there. So they are making progress and they did make a difference and they learned the Lord's Prayer. So if you ask my kids now, they know the Lord's Prayer. So just the small things, those are small victories that we are seeing in the after school program. Uh, the uh, in school suspension rate has dropped tremendously. Uh, our kids are. Uh, Grades are better. We still got some improvements we can make in science and stuff like that. But for the most part, our kids are doing better in school and everything. So it's definitely been a great investment that you guys. Okay. Did. Are there any questions of, of Mr. Woodard while he's before us? I would like to compliment you because uh, being in that business, I know a confrontational yes. kind of up in your face have to work. And I've heard so many good things. And I'm looking forward to visit you tomorrow. Okay. All right. All right. We're, we're waiting. We're waiting. Okay. Are there other questions? Courtney, thank you so much. All right. And before I leave, I would like to ask for the remaining funds, if we could use it for an after school program. We're already in the motion of getting everything approved with the school and setting up at uh, Springfield Middle. So I would like to request that we could use the remaining funds for an after school, well, summer program to keep the same kids that we're just following all the way through middle school up to high school. So that's what we're trying to do for the summer. We have, of course, approved the program. We had the school year as the framework, as you had requested. Uh, Paul? Well, one but thing I think we need to do, rather than encumber funds and carry it from one year to the next, if, the, if it's the board's pleasure to continue the program through the summer, uh, we need to, whatever we, whenever this starts, we need to make sure if we can take it, some of it out of the balance uh, by June 30th, that's fine. Anything that's delivered after July 1st ought to really be in the next year's budget. So they, I think they've spent around half the money. I think we allocated 20 and I think about 11,000 or 10,000, somewhere in that area is how much they've spent. So the fact is we just want to make sure that everything's budgeted cleanly in the appropriate year that it's, it's spent. Okay. Uh, do I hear a motion from the board that, that these funds would be allowed to continue to be used for this purpose uh, through June 30th? I make a motion that they would be allowed to be used through June 30th. Is there a second? Yes, sir. All right. Any discussion? I have one comment. I won't be able to vote since I'm on the YMCA board, but you're doing a wonderful job with our children. Thank you for what you do. Thank you. All right, anything further? One question, sir. Ms. Ellis. Is this within the amount of money that we gave you? Yes. That we the board approved yes. earlier, mm -hmm. so you're not asking for any more money? No more money, just. <laughs> All right. 
Please call the roll. Hubbard. Aye. Snyder. Abstain. Carneal. Aye. Sneed. Aye. Head. Yes. Ellis. Aye. Mason. Aye. Passed six to zero and one abstain. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now we have item 3.2 is the monthly adjustment of retail electric rates by Springfield Electric due to a wholesale fuel cost adjustment by TVA. Uh, Mr. Woodard, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me for that, <laughs> I was thinking of the last gentleman, but you're probably going to want it. You're probably going to want me to wish I hadn't called on you anyway, but I'm going to ask you about what about that little problem on Sunday? <laughs> well, uh, we, had a, we don't know. We had a transmission outage and uh, we traced the line from one end to the other from South Springfield substation on Batson Parkway all the way back to our district substation looking for a dead bird or a tree or something, but I hadn't found anything. It's just probably one of those things that got into the lines and cleared. Stay long enough to do the damage and take the breaker out. Well, there were some who theorized that somebody was trying to was trying to shorten the church service or two by <laughs> having the preacher <laughs> cut off at a certain time. That did happen at a church or two. So uh, I don't know whether there was some conspiracy that way or what it was, but there were sure some unhappy customers at some local restaurants on that on that day. So I hope that that won't happen again. Thank uh, goodness it came and on in time. Your name is not Woodard, it is Robert Gardner. So now tell me about the rates, the rate change for this month. Uh, high increase, 1.3%, uh, going up about a dollar to a dollar fifty average on the residential rates. Okay. Is there a motion? So move. Second. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Mason. Aye. Ellis. Aye. Sneed. Aye. Carneal. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Head. Yes. Snyder. Aye. Pass seven to zero. All right. Next, 3.3 .3 is the, uh, similarly, the uh, monthly adjustment of gas rates. Since Mr. Hall's not here, I guess we won't be voting on that. Is that right? Or we don't? <laughs> <laughs> Got somebody's attention. And is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All right. Do we know what that, what is it showing that increases to be? Looks like this is up 0.9772% or a little under 1%. Okay. Any discussion? Yes, sir. I just left Texas and gas is flowing. Well, that's good. It's Maybe they'll cheaper. lower the price now. Yes, sir. Mr. Ellis, we're getting <laughs> ready to vote. Okay. Please call it over. Gas rates. Snyder. Aye. Carneal. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Sneed. Aye. Head. Yes. Mason. Aye. Mr. Ellis. <laughs> Pass seven to zero. Okay. Now, 3.4 is to discuss and possibly take action on the renewal of a contract uh, with Thurman Campbell Group to do the audit of our all of our financial statements. This would be a three-year contract. Uh, they've given us the most recent audit at a meeting a couple of months ago. It was a very positive report. Uh, is there a motion that this contract be approved? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Head. Yes. Carneal. Aye. Snyder. Aye. Mason. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Ellis. Aye. Snee. Aye. Pass seven to zero. Okay, we move now to 3.5, discuss and possibly take action on the acquisition of properties for drainage improvements planned for Queen Anne Fort area. Mr. Nutting, you want to make a statement there and then we'll go down to the properties themselves. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, as you know, the board uh, authorized Carol Croft to negotiate the acquisition of these properties. Um, and they have been uh, interacting with the uh, property owners. I believe you have some uh, correspondence by Ms. Croft uh, later on each property. Um, there has been some correspondence that I know on one property, the Lee property, where there was some correspondence with Ms. Croft that had not been entered into the uh, record reflecting that the uh, 
that the attorney thought that the property owner, she was going to urge them to accept uh, 1012, $112,000, which was the appraised value. Uh, if you look on uh, this item on the uh, second page, you'll see that uh, there are a number of uh, prices listed. You have the three property owners. You have uh, Lee at 2502, Queen Anne, Batson at 2506, and Batson at 2508. The uh, numbers there, there's four numbers. Uh, the first column deals with the appraised value, the market value of the appraisal for not subject to flooding. And you can see that Lee was $112,000. Uh, Batson at 2506 was 83,600, and Batson at 2508 was 87,500. In the appraisal subject to flooding, uh, the Lee appraised value was 101,000. The Batson at 2506 was 71,100, and the Batson appraisal at 2508, appraisal subject to flooding, was $78,800. Uh, we have shown the last offer. Uh, I think some of that correspondence is, uh, uh, this information is in the correspondence. Uh, the last offer that we made to Lee's was $106,500. Uh, to Batson was 71,100 at 2506, and at 2508 it was 82,740. And then you have the property owner's last counter offer. I put 112,000 for Lee because the attorney uh, was recommending that for the client, although we did not hear specifically from the client on that. Uh, the Batson property uh, last counter offer, $83,600. And then uh, we had a counter offer. I believe Mrs. Batson uh, wrote a letter, and uh, I think we have that. And the last uh, offer that she made was $89,767.28, which I think there were some tax issues and other things related to the property. What the, what the staff is going to recommend is that we use the market appraisals, but we're going we're gonna to have some some differences between the properties and uh let me let me make sure has everybody got a map of these properties let me give you uh connie you've got your map and let me give the one that alan had the one i'm giving you now alan has provided and you can see where the properties lay where we're going to actually make the improvements widen that detention pond and i think ms watson has gone ahead and uh, provided some maps Connie, have you got all those? Did you give those individually to everybody? And uh, kind of shows, uh, once again, where the properties lie relevant to each other, and then a uh, kind of a little bit of a, more of a higher elevation map that shows how it relates to that section of the subdivision. So let me just uh, point out to you that if you look at the, uh, the maps with the names on them. You see the Lee property is sitting high at the end of the culvert. That's on one end. And then you've got the 2508 Queen Anne Court uh, Batson property on the other end. Now, we had since bought that vacant property between Lee and uh, Batson at 2506 was the Holmes property. As you remember, that was severely inundated with water. And we bought that, that about, yeah, and that was um, you know, purchased, I think, almost three years ago. I think it was 2010. Uh, so we've had that property for some time, and the, and the home's been uh, removed. The, uh, the lead property and the, the property on the other end uh, really uh, have never been subject to having a lot of rain during a normal rainfall on the property or actually in the houses themselves. There's been rain on the property, uh, but certainly not to the extent that uh, the former McNabb house that Mr. Batson bought, uh, that had, as you know, that was always surrounded by water. I mean, except for the front yard, it was totally surrounded by water and had some water in the uh, crawl space basement. Uh, but not a whole lot, not, not anywhere near as, as high as Ms. Holmes' house was. 
So I think what uh, what the staff to try to be consistent what we're recommending is that we purchase the Lee property at 2502 and the Batson property at 2505 at the appraised value that is not subject to flooding. So in other words, buying Lee at $112,000, making that offer to them, and making a $87,500 offer to Batson at 2508. And then at the former McNabb house, we are recommending that the appraised value uh, for a property subject to flood flooding be paid in the amount of $71,100. And then we're further recommending that if they do not accept those uh, offers, that uh, you authorize the city attorney to uh, acquire those properties uh, through the court and through eminent domain. All right, let's review that. You're recommending that for 2502, uh, which is at the end on the right side of the cul-de-sac, you re recommended 112,000. At 2506, you are recommending what? 71,000, because that is subject okay. to flooding. And for 2508, 78,000. No, 87,500 because it is not subject to flooding. Okay. All right, is everybody clear on those amounts? Okay, let me calculate. 112,000 on the 2502 property, 71,1 on 2506, and 87,5 on 2508. Two of those subject, one of those subject to flooding, two not. And that's the reason for the for the uh, recommendations. Mr. Mr. Mayor, um, what is your question, sir? Are you ready for a, a vote? No, I'm, I'm entertaining questions right okay. now. Question Good. on the map. If, I'm, if I read the map correctly, there's a topographic line that runs through 2506 and 2508. Both of those houses, that would indicate that if 2506 is subject to flooding, 2508 would be subject to flooding also. No, it's not. What that is, Mr. Head, is right now it is not currently subject to flooding. What that will do, remember, this is a regional improvement. We're ta not talking about just uh, improving the things dark, to the these. The dark lines are, are the improvements. That's well, you have the, the line there. You can see the top topographic where we are going to expand the detention pond. You're That's at, the Bruce, finished the detention proposed pond. contour. Okay. As it's the actually lighter, built. The lighter lines are the existing. That's what's hard. To, you, this drawing's terrible. I couldn't get it reproduced as well as I wanted. So remember, we're we're trying to improve drainage in this whole area. So we are going to expand the uh, retention pond. I'm sorry, the detention pond, and also we're going to install a pumping system that will carry. Uh, that water once it reaches a certain elevation in another direction. All right, now we have three parcels, and I guess we better take those individually. They are listed on the agenda as, as, as individual. 3.6, 3.7, and 3.8. Okay? So we will move through that in that in that order. First property we we'll Take it for a vote would be 2502 Queen Anne Court, which is the Lee property. Uh, is there a motion that this item be uh, considered? So moved. Second. All right. Now, any discussion on the on the 2502 property? Call the question. Alice. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Sneed. Aye. Snyder. Aye. Carneal, Aye. Mason, Aye. Head, yes. Pass seven to zero. Okay. Is everybody? And, and can we state that this your offer is one hundred twelve thousand for the yes, record, these, right? That's what we had just yeah. repeated. But well, it would that. be good if one hundred twelve. That was one hundred twelve thousand. We had been repeated twice, and I thought that was sufficient. But now twenty five oh six. Move for approval. Second. All right, and that amount would be seventy-one. No, sir. Thousand one hundred. Yeah. That's what the recommendation is. Well, my, my my vote would not be for. So well, then you're going to have to amend it. I make an amendment because of the president was set with the hundred twenty thousand dollars to keep a discriminatory thing from coming in. 
that 2506 would be paid the appraisal not subject to flooding, $83,600. All right, Mr. Hubbard is amending uh, the 2506 recommendation of 711. He is amending that to the, the amount not subject to flooding, and that's 83600 Am I hearing you correctly? James? Yes, sir, you're hearing me correct. Right. Is there a second to your amendment? Second. All right. Well, all right. Any discussion now on the amendment, Paul? I, I have to say this. The, the board realizes that we tried to purchase this property for $50,000 uh, over a year and a half after the original flooding issue came up. Mr. Batson, Mr. Batson bought the property, bought the house, knowing that it was subject to flooding at forty-five thousand dollars. And uh, you know, if it were up to me, <laughs> you well, wouldn't get it. You know, all right. Yeah, you you have to pay the you know market value. So I think at seventy-one thousand one hundred dollars, uh, he certainly has made a lot of money on his investment. Are there other comments? Before we vote on the amendment, I'd is like that, to offer is this an amendment. The, yeah, we're voting on it. The, your comments would be about this proposed amendment of changing the offered amount from 71.1 to 83.6. That's Mr. Hubbard's amendment. Okay, I, I, if I want to offer an amendment uh, to not take this piece of property, when does that come in? Well, I think you could vote. You can offer that also, or you could just simply vote no. Well, that might not be enough of us voting no. <laughs> well, that's fine. That's All fine. right. Well, I'd like to hear Mr. Allen Ellis's. Mr. Allen Ellis. Opinion on that. Well, of the three properties, this is the one most needed. <laughs> so I think to to uh, make, to make this work. Uh, and uh, of course, we know it's been flooding from day one after the railroad did their thing. Uh, that's all I can say. I can't hardly, uh, it's up to y'all what you buy, but that's, if any of them, I'd rather have that one than any of them, so. But to do the whole plan, we have to have three of them. Are there other questions of Mr. Ellis? I guess now I have a question for Mr. Jim Bothrop. How much money are we going to spend going to court over this issue? Is it going to be over $12,000? As far as legal fees and appraisal expenses, it probably won't be over 12000 What the jury will do, I can't sit here and tell you I know. What's your opinion? They tend to split between our appraiser and their appraiser somewhere, not, not always right in the middle. We got the okay. What would they they charge when they go to court too? Yeah. yeah. All right. Other so, questions or comments regarding the amendment that's been proposed, Ms. Snyder. I guess we were elected. To, I know we were elected to be good stewards of the money. So, therefore, if we go to court, we could have to pay court fees for both sides. No. Uh, well. Possibly their appraisers' expenses, not their legal, not their legal expenses, but their appraisers' expenses, possibly. The, uh, and I don't know. Do we have? Have they furnished us with their appraisals, or is it just our appraisals? Just ours. We don't have their appraisals yet. We don't know what they'll come back with. <clears throat> the legal term for it, I don't guess I can say on live television. <laughs> All right. Other questions or comments before we vote on the amendment? Can I make a comment on, on my why I chose? Yes, you I, I knew, you know, like talking, make it brief, please. Talking to Mr. Ellis, I knew that that twenty, that twenty-five oh six was a driving <laughs> point to really get his retention pond. So, all right, sir. Anything further now before we vote on the amendment? Please call. Is, I, I'm okay, sorry, I'm going to quiz this one to death because it's property. Um, Mr. Nutting, do you believe that we can get it for seventy-one? Well, I think the jury's going to hear that the public could have had it for 50 and uh, that this is basically a B-2 
big money-making deal for somebody. That's my opinion. Okay. okay. And I think, yeah, take it to take it to the jury and let's let's see what happens. I think I think we have to offer to take it to court, Mr. Walthrop. We have to give them the market value, the appraised value. So to take, I, is that correct? Yeah. So I mean, we would have to, and I have no objection to that. But I'll tell you what, I, I think any penny above that is a travesty. All right, other questions now? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I don't know how many of y'all have been out there to survey the situation on site, but I have, and so I call, I've been call out there and looked at it as well. So we are voting on Mr. Hubbard's amendment. Amendment to offer 83.6 rather than the 71.1. All right. I think it's been amply discussed without objection. We're going to call the roll on the amendment. Hubbard? Aye. Snyder? No. Carneal? No. Sneed? No. Head? Yes. Ellis? No. Mason? No. Failed two to five. All right, back on the main motion. Anything further? Yes, I'd like to <coughs> amend the motion. All right, sir. Proposed to make the amendment, you mean? I'd like to amend the motion. Okay. Uh, proposed uh, to change the uh, 71 1, reduce that by 4,000 to 67,100 with the stipulation that Mr. Batson removes the house, uh, pay him 67 1, which is 4,000 less, and have him move the house within 90 days. All right, Mr. Sneed's amendment would offer 67 1 instead of the 71 1 and require the uh, owner to remove it. Is there a second to Mr. Sneed's amendment? Is there a second? Fails for lack of a second. We're back on the main motion to offer 71-1. Is there any further discussion? Let me try one amendment, sir. All right, sir. Everybody needs to listen that. carefully. One of them. Uh, I do know that Mr. Batson did, I thought it was just what Mr. Paul said, I went and uh, we were going to buy it and being an individual, he, they could go buy it much quicker than government moves. Uh, Mr. Batson, being the businessman he is, and uh, he's a very good businessman, he went and bought it for $45,000. Uh, he understood the water. He understood uh, everything about it. Uh, he built the house originally and uh, he's renting the house today. And I, I would say that all he has to do is say, uh, don't put anything in the basement. Because it's, I don't mean basement like a house, made, but it's under the house, crawl space. Uh, and personally, and I know we may need that to, to build a holding pond or whatever we're talking about. But I, I just make a motion that we let Mr. Batson keep it. Mr. Ellis is moving that we not offer anything on this property. Is there a second to his amendment? Is there a second? Fails for lack of a second. Back on the main motion of 71-1. Is there any further discussion? Please call the question. Carneal? Aye. Head? No. Sneed? Aye. Mason? Aye. Snyder? Aye. Ellis? Aye. Hubbard? No. Pass five to two. All right. Is that my iPad is frozen. All righty. Now we are at the 2508 property. This is item 3.8 and the recommended offer because it's not under the category of not subject to flooding, the recommendation is $87,500. Is there a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Second. Discussion? For, for Mr. Mr. Uh, how much did Mr. Batson give for this piece of property? Or did he trade a house or something? Uh, he may be the one to can answer that. I don't know how much money he has in this house. Well, I, I do know this, and Mr. Batson's here, so if you want to want to ask him. But th there was a transaction made, and I can't tell you the exact amount of money uh, offhand, but it, 
somewhere around the 89 number that uh, Mrs. Batson stated. It was 87, I think, according to the records. Okay, okay, that was All the right. actual purchase. Okay. Okay, thank you. I appreciate All right, 87 that. 5 is the offer. Is there any further discussion? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make an amendment to the motion. Okay. I'd like to reduce the price of 82740 to 78740 and have Mr. Batcher remove the house in 90 days. That would save the city the cost of tearing it down, which was the purpose of the first try, but maybe I need to explain it a little more. All right, you're yeah. proposing to amend the offer to from 87.5 to $78,740 with removal in 90 days? That is correct, sir. All right, is there a second? Is there a second? Motion fails for lack of a second. Back on the main motion. 87,500, is there anything further before we vote? Call for question. Hey, Ed. Yes. Carneal. Aye. Snyder. Aye. Mason. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Ellis. Aye. Sneed. Aye. Pass seven to zero. All right. We move to 3.9. Discuss and possibly take action on a proposed agreement with Tennessee Department of Transportation, known as TDOT, for the license agreement granting permission to use the right of way to install and maintain roadway landscaping along US 41, which is State Route 11, Memorial Boulevard. Is there a motion? Is there a motion? So moved. And a second? Second. Paul, do you want to? Yes, I believe. Uh Mr. Balthrop and Mr. Ellis, that there is some, there are some conditions in this that we are going to have to amend, and uh, I think Mr. Balthrop will brief you on that. My suggestion would be, uh, after Mr. Balthrop briefs you, to approve the license agreement, subject to any changes that Mr. Balthrop uh, right. negotiates uh, with the Jim, state. Jim, would you go ahead with your? There's one uh, requirement in this agreement uh, in paragraph 10 that requires the uh, city to ca carry uh, liability limits of 300,000 per person or 100,000 or a million dollars per occurrence. We currently have 700,000, uh, 300 per person and 700,000 per occurrence or a $300,000 difference in the per, per occurrence, which is in compliance with state law. That's, that's the maximum unless we agree to pay more. Uh, I have not been speaking with anyone in the legal department at Department of Transportation, but I have talked with someone else. We, we're not ignoring each other, just missing calls. Uh, they tell me that the state limits, which, which is correct, are a million dollars per occurrence as far as the liability of the estate, and they will not waive this. I don't know whether they will or not. I have not talked with the, the legal folks. Uh, if it if it is approved, I would like for it to just be approved only if we can get that reduced to seven hundred thousand per occurrence, or find out what it will cost us to raise our limits. All by right, would the maker 000. and seconder of the motion agree to Mr. Uh, Balthrop's term? Agreed. Agreed. All right. They both acknowledge the agreement. Yes. Okay. As. Uh, any other question then about this proposal? Tell us exactly what this is, sir. What will this encompass, Mr. Allen Ellis? You, I believe, are the one to answer that. This is the roadscape project that's been going on from on Memorial Boulevard for about the last three or four years. This is a license agreement between TDOT and the City of Springfield so that we can plant trees and operate and maintain, uh, not trees, shrubs up and down this area. It just allows them to get on to their property and do work. They're just covering all their bases is all it amounts to. So if those shrubs got out, were to grow up too high and became a hazard, and I guess that's what- And then our people to get on there right away to yeah. do the work. Okay. That's what it is. All right, answer the question. Anything further before we vote? Call the question. Carneal. Aye. Head. Yes. Sneed. Aye. Mason. Aye. Snyder. Aye. Ellis. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Pass seven to zero. Okay, and we move now to 3.10. This is a presentation of CT 0253, a report of debt obligations, a reporting of uh, pu uh, public improvement bonds that were sold on March the 19th, 2013. Mr. Nutting. 
Thank you, Mayor. I think this is just a report that Ms. Murphy is required, required to put in. Is that right, Ms. Murphy? And it just it's your basic breakdown on the last bond issue. Which covers the, a lot of the sewer work and several other public improvements. Correct. Okay. You've got your copy of that. 311 is to discuss and possibly take action on creating a downtown Springfield Advisory Committee. This is an outgrowth of the downtown of the meeting about the needs of downtown Springfield that was held in this room about a month or so ago. Uh, Ms. Fosnes, will you come forward and uh, make any comments you see that would be appropriate if you'll go to the podium, please? We welcome you. Thank you. The night of February 28th, when we had the town hall meeting here, there were a number of people, over 40 people signed um, a, a register that said that they wanted to be kept updated on um, the pro progress of the issues that we spoke about that night. And many of them expressed a willingness to serve on a downtown uh, advisory committee. Um, it has been suggested in conversations that such a committee would bear a lot more weight if it was officially an ad hoc committee of the city that you would appoint a group of people, interested people, as an advisory committee to keep track of the progress of some of the things we talked about that night, such as signage for parking, directional signage, um, and other issues that we talked about that night. Um, I have not moved forward with contacting those people to ask about their willingness to serve on a committee because I wanted to wait and see if you would want to do that as a, an outgrowth of the city board. All right, uh, if you will remain there just a moment, Margo, let's see if there are any any objection to this being done? I'd like to ask Mr. Ellis about his opinion on it because it's basically going to undermine what he does in his department. Because right currently, I mean, his department has say on signs and, and the right of ways and so forth, and it's going to be a competing interest with the gut with the department. Uh, Mr. Allen Ellis, uh, I don't know. This is the first time I've been talking about, but. Uh, as far as signs, we take any advice. Now, there's legally some signs we can't do, you know, by state law. We're under the manual uniform traffic control. But uh, uh, the only thing I know of so far we've asked about is the public parking signs. Is that mm -hmm. correct so far? Mm -hmm. But, yes, we would have to, we can't do everything, I'm sure, that some people are going to come up with. But. I mean, there is a department, there is procedures for people who have issues to go through the traffic committee yes. and so forth. And other than that, uh, refer to question to Ms. Foss, other than traffic issues, what what do you encompass that this proposal? Well, there was support? a long list of um, suggestions made at that meeting um, about many different issues, parking, et cetera, et cetera, um, downtown associations, promoting events, that sort of thing. Um, what we're proposing is an advisory committee that would be made up of business owners and uh, property owners and people who are interested in the downtown district. Do you propose that this committee have terms, term limits, staggering? That would be up to you. Salary? Mm -hmm. No, no, absolutely no salary. It would be a volunteer committee. Other one, comments? Yeah, one stipulation. I'm, I'm very progressive, but they work at the pleasure of the elected board. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. We don't need any undermining. Uh, diminishing our mm -hmm. spin on things. Uh, absolutely. And okay. we're, what we're proposing long, is long, an long advisory long board okay. to give you input from people who have an interest in the downtown Definitely district. We are the elected mm -hmm. officials of mm -hmm. the city. Bruce, I believe, were you here that night? Yes. Do mm -hmm. uh, you have a thoughts on that? You're a downtown businessman. I think it's a good idea. I like it. Okay. Uh, Mr. Ellis? Yes. Could, would, would we do it? Each, each alderman? I think Frank it would be one. a good idea for each member of the board to have a recommendation whether they lived in their district or not mm -hmm. taken perhaps from that list of that that they have of expressed interest or others you may choose mm -hmm. but let each person uh miss Bosnes will give us that list and then we can move accordingly how do, how do you feel on this certainly certainly with our wards our wards being represented fairly yes i definitely agree I always want to kind of we're not going to make this a, a tight stipulation but that each board member would be responsible for agreeing to a person to serve yes. on this board on this committee well what, what, I'm, what I'm saying understand what I'm saying have fairness okay 
what we're doing that you, you wouldn't if you have to say so I trust you'd be fair I would definitely okay. be fair and that's that takes care but of I don't want I'm not gonna argue with you but I don't want you know just certain people driving the ship others not having mm -hmm. a part of it mm -hmm. so I'm what? careful about that excuse me sir I'm careful about that mm -hmm. oh, been because that, that that old ghost is still in Springfield mm -hmm. I'm very careful about this. Spread it around. Right. Mr. Steed, I propose that we establish a downtown advisory committee based on the members um, of this board choosing someone of their choice in their district or if there's not someone suitable like any other board that can go outside. Contingent with the same term limits of the board members, so it runs concurrent with those, it keeps it staggered that is non-compensated and that the advisory board be established uh, for a period of, um, of uh, six years that way it would work out and then we would review whether we need to continue with this advisory board so we'll see how it goes for six years instead of establishing where it would require action to, to dissolve have a term a time limit of six years see if it's something that We'd want to continue. You'll let the sunshine law take right. care. Okay. All right. Sunset law. Right. Right. Thank you, Margo. Any? Is there a second to Mr. Uh, Sneed's proposal? Second. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Hubbard. Aye. Snyder. Aye. Carneal. Aye. Sneed. Aye. Head. Yes. Ellis. Aye. Mason. Aye. Past seven to zero. All right, now 312 is to discuss and possibly take action on steps being taken to comply with the EPA's administrative order on consent. Mr. Nutting, would you uh, speak to this issue and try to give us a summary of where we stand after your meeting on Monday with state officials in this, uh, on this issue? Sure, Mayor. Let me uh, go first of all, hand out some uh, schedules and a uh, list of things that have been done to date. And then, uh, there's been concern over the building permit issue and there's no restriction as on building permits straight up there's this is going to be a little more complicated issue in the fact that the the issue at at hand here is the ability of our sewer system to hold the uh, wastewater uh, to collect it and uh, basically uh, we've created uh, system overflows now I'm going to try to make this as brief and succinct as possible and give you some idea as far as where we're at first of all the city operates under state law under a state permit and that state permit deals with the operation of the entire wastewater system from the plant the pumps and the collection system and in that they require that there be no system overflows that's standard wording in a state permit now the EPA has issued an administrative order on consent and why this uh, order was issued is because we have system overflows that we are going to have to correct and right now we're focusing on uh, after the administrative order was issued trying to evaluate the system and determine to what extent we're going to make uh, the rectification to the system now the important thing to remember about this general order is that new connections or increased flows from existing connections will be tied to the condition of the system at the specific locations within the system so it, it's going to be a little different story depending upon where you're at how much capacity is in the pipe and so forth for example the car creek interceptor uh, system i'll just call it that we have a portion of our system finds its way to the plant along car creek then there's another portion of the system the older portion of the system which is in very bad shape because we're extremely old city uh, and most of our wastewater, maybe about 70%, finds its way to Sulphur Fork Creek. The Car Creek interceptor portion of the system 
is in pretty good shape because it's new. So really, we haven't had any issues with regard to issuing building permits uh, for anything off that system. Now, there are some concerns in there that, that we're going to have to rectify. Circle Drive, I believe, is a portion feeds into that, but that's at the upper end. Everything down below that uh, is fine, and that includes uh, 431 South, uh, the hospital area, South Main Street, Batson Boulevard, all that area that can be developed uh, is basically uh, uh, has enough capacity and we don't have any system overflow, so that's pretty good. On the Sulphur Fork Creek uh, issue, uh, that's another matter. That's where we're going to be spending a lot of money to uh, make improvements to the system to stop the I and I infiltration and inflow, which is taking capacity in the pipe. When it rains, these pipes fill up with water, and therefore the sewer comes out of the pipe, and you you know you're you're sending water to the wastewater treatment plant, and you're putting some sewer on lawns and other things. So. That's why, you know, we're under the administrative order. Now, the order states that uh, within 24 months of the order, we entered in the order this past September. So by September of 2014, we have to come back with a published capacity assurance program. And by that, we are stating we, we, we have to make sure that if we add anything to the system or we increase flows from a, uh, an existing connection that there must be adequate collection, that means the pipes must be of adequate size, transmission, the pumps may should pump at the rate they need to pump and, and uh, not creating capacity issues, and the treatment capacity of the plant must be enough to uh, you know, accommodate that wastewater. Right now, we have we really don't have too many transmission issues or treatment issues. The the issue is the overflows for the collection system. Now, in order to be able to build on the system or add something, a connection to the system, you must be able to certify that the capacity you have the capacity in order to connect to the system. And you have to remember, as we start making these repairs, we're gaining capacity back. Right now in this first year, we won't be doing any improvements, but we will be designing those improvements and getting ready for bid. A year in September of 2013, a year before the capacity assurance program has to go into effect, we will be making uh, improvements that will rectify a lot of the I and I. Now, this project could be more extensive than what we originally start out with, but we'll have a better idea in a few months. Uh, so, we will be uh, preparing some repairs prior to the capacity assurance program. Now, we must be able to certify capacity in order to connect to the system, and there's a whole series of information and calculations that are made to be able to prove that, and the EPA is requiring us to do all those things. Now, in the case that we can't certify it, that we didn't meet the stipulation there, the EPA has also give us, given us some flexibility, uh, and it's good news for building permits, in the fact that as we make these improvements, we regain capacity. And so you, they've allowed us to create a banking credit system and it pertains to the addition of sewer capacity or reduction in one hour peak flows from capacity enhancement projects where we improve the system, I and I removal projects, which is what we're undertaking right now, and removal of con connections completed after the removal of connections completed after the effective date of the order. Such things as when we remove houses in a blighted area, uh, that connection can be banked and that capacity can be credited against a new connection uh, in the future. So uh, when we're banking, we're not only banking eliminating connections, what we're doing is we're banking gallons per day. And I think under, if you use the flexibility, if you're in an issue, a point in the system where you can't uh, certify, you can use the uh, bank uh, banking credit system and that gives you a little flexibility in that for every two gallons, I think the order says for every two gallons that you increase your capacity, you can add a gallon. 
And so as we start making these improvements, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of gallons of capacity that we should be able to recoup. Now, between the initiation of the Capacity Assurance Program and now, uh, as we're trying to evaluate where we're at, uh, the city's been operating under uh, an informal capacity insurance program, staff has. And uh, basically, uh, what that means is it's going to be foolish for us at this point, not even beginning to rectify the, uh, the system to improve that, to add a lot of additional capacity at this particular moment in time. We're not adding a big apartment complexes or new subdivisions at this point. Uh, what we do uh, have an opportunity to do, because we're not under a strict capacity assurance program yet, the state is very comfortable with us going ahead uh, in the interim and uh, allowing uh, building permits on, uh, for example, single family homes that have been uh, approved for building permit uh, prior or have been approved on a plat prior. Uh, and of course, uh, as we make them, as this condition changes, as improvements are made to the system uh, and uh, capacity uh, credits accumulate. So there'll be a couple of things going on here. If you want to have a building permit, if the system is good where you're at, you're good to go. Uh, if there are, if and they can certify that and that you're, you're good to go. If that doesn't work, if the improvements aren't exactly what they need to be at your location, you can still utilize the credit system, uh, which will be the gallons, two gallons per one gallon. Uh, uh, so once again, I want to reiterate, in this first year in September, we will begin making system improvements before we have to have the formal capacity assurance program. So it's not a clean, yes, you can have permits everywhere, you no, know you can't have permits here. It's, it's not a green situation in every case like it was. We were on, under flashing yellow. We have to be cautious what we add to the system. And of course, as we make the improvements, then that becomes less of an issue. And as we keep making the improvements from a certifiable standpoint, the areas that are going to be restricted or will be under question when we issue building permits will be much smaller. Um, so I think that's the big summary. Now, I'm a little confused, uh, and I had stated this. We had realizing Robert, realizing Robertson's future. It asked me a question. I offered some information about some public buildings, and I'm not sure reading this order uh, a little bit longer. I think I uh, put out some information that I, I may have a wrong interpretation, but they had addressed public buildings, uh, schools and that sort of thing as, as being under the, uh, I thought that they were exempt, but you read closer. I, I don't know the purpose of spelling it out because they're just other buildings. If they're going to be treated like others, why are we spelling them out? But they address at the end of this that you know, they don't fall under the certain category, but uh, they are going to have to be, if you add them, they're going to have to be on the credit bank if that's necessary. Now, to kind of put this in perspective right now, for example, the new school that is planned in off Batson Boulevard, well, there, there's not an issue over there anyway. Uh, it goes to Car Creek, so it's not an issue in the first place. We, we won't you know, the capacity is assured there. We know we can prove that. The hospital is served by the Car Creek Interceptor. So any major medical facilities built on that campus uh, won't be affected in, or in that area. Um, see, what was the other example? Um, we had built, I guess those were the two examples. So um, I want some clarification. I would like to ask the EPA why that specific provision is in there and why it's worded that way. So I'm still not quite sure uh, what the purpose of that is. But I guess we're, right now we're going to have to assume that you can build those facilities, but you're going to have to use the, uh, the certification, and but you can use the credit system on those as well. Um, now, with that said, 
So you understand it's not a black and white issue with regard to building permits. It all depends where you're building and what the capacity is going to be. And that's how we're going to have to operate for as long as the order is in effect. When the order goes away, and hopefully it will go away when we make enough improvements that we don't have the system overflows anymore. Um, so, Roger, is that a fair representation? Does that? Okay. Now, what I wanted to tell you as far as specific steps in the order, when we were issued the order in September, and you have a list here, there were certain uh, deadlines that we had to meet and uh, just wanted to call those out for you. And you can see that uh, on October 24th, we were to establish a list of all authorized new service, sewer service connections or increases in flow from existing connections, which flows have not yet been introduced into the uh, wastewater collection and treatment system. Then on the 11-24 uh, of 2012, we, provided, we were to provide the EPA a list of uh, sewer system overflows, including constructed overflows, for the past 24 months prior to the effective date of the administrative order on consent. And uh, we've done that. And then on uh, March 24th, we were to submit four things to the EPA. Uh, submit a capacity assessment plan. It's not a capacity assurance program. Capacity assessment plan, a sewer system evaluation survey work plan, a sewer overflow response plan, and an information management system program. So those have all been done on schedule. Uh, on June 24th, the next thing we have to submit is a fats, oils, and grease uh, control program to the EPA for their review and approval. We have a quarterly report coming up on uh, April 28th. We submitted one on January 28th, and that was uh, submitted ahead of schedule. The city has uh, sold the bonds. Uh, we sold the bonds on, in March, and we received the proceeds on March 19th, which was a month ago. Uh, we've, pour, we've performed over $750,000 worth of uh, engineering evaluation work. Uh, the, we met with the engineers yesterday after we uh, met with the state. And uh, their goal is, I, I, I think I'm stating a summer and a possible uh, August award, their goal as of yesterday was to try to get the specs completed in June and the contract out for bid in July, for award in July, so that we'd have to contract repairs beginning uh, September 1st. And then, of course, then we'll have a full year to uh, make repairs before we have to have the capacity assurance plan uh, on a formal basis. So I th what we are going to do every month now is give you an update as far as where we are, as far as the schedule. What I also like uh, Gresham Smith and Partners to do is to come in quarterly or every six months or as long as this program is going on and to have a special meeting with you and explain what we're doing, uh, what the strategy is going to be, maybe discuss that strategy with you because you may want to make certain improvements in certain areas of the system. If you know a certain portion of the system is going to grow, uh, you want to make sure maybe you put a little more emphasis on that portion of the system. It's a, that's going to impact future development more than something that maybe is an old part of town and isn't developing. But in any case, your public health and safety has to be the primary issue. So uh, we're making some progress. Uh, we are issuing building permits. Uh, we are issuing building permits within the suggested restraint of the state. Right now, there are those constraints and parameters. and. Uh, so uh, we're not having a whole lot of requests for building permits, but building has been down a long time. And believe me, we want to uh, build as much as we can while the market comes back. But uh, I think by taking a real aggressive uh, posture uh, with this, we can have some of this corrected so that at least a number of building permits maybe next year won't really be at issue. All right, Paul, thank you for that report. This has been something that's been on it's a top priority with a whole lot of citizens who are interested in the growth of this community. And we intend that it proceed in an orderly way of compliance with the consent decree that we've agreed to, but that we take every advantage of everything that's at our disposal to, to move as fast as we can on it. So it looks like we'll see some work actually beginning uh, as early as September, or say as this fall.
Yeah, have you seen the Hydromax trucks and the uh, people that are doing the flow monitoring? Uh, you've seen them all around town, so that's all part of the analysis. And we're working on the most chronic overflow areas right now, which are on the Sulphur Fork Creek portion of the system. And also the board last month, while these folks were still in town, because they do this as a specialized work, and there are a lot of cities in Tennessee under the same situation we are, we felt that if we were going to lose these, if we, after they finished their first two tasks, they'd go away, it would be difficult for us to get them back. So uh, while they were in town, the board last month authorized them to take on another task 3A, which they are doing right now, which deals with constructed overflows. And so that hopefully that uh, those constructed overflows will have uh, some funds to address those with the chronic overflows. Okay. All right, we have uh, 313 us to discuss and possibly take action on long-term plans for the Woodard Hall building. We'll make a recommendation that uh, if you look ahead at the next one, is 314, which is to spe uh, schedule a special meeting to review the for our an initial look at the 2014 budget. Uh, without objection, let's put that Woodard Hall discussion on the same night as the budget uh, request, because after all, that's what we're talking about is money for it. What does uh, May the 7th look like for you all? That's a Tuesday night, first Tuesday in May. Be a 7 o'clock meeting if Mr. Mason will allow me to make it that early. So we can get started on the budget. Clay, is that a problem? What about the next week, maybe on the, the 14th? On the 14th? Uh, that's not a problem with me. Is that a problem with any of you all? Fourteenth uh, worked better for you, Clay. No, ac actually, the uh, yes, that's fourteenth. That's right. All right, we'll schedule that seven o'clock on the fourteenth. Miss Jane will get that in the paper for us. And uh, the consent portion of the agenda is next. What's your pleasure? Move for total approval. Second. Second. Please call the roll. Mason. Aye. Ellis. Aye. Snee. Aye. Carneal. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Head. Yes. Snyder. Aye. Has seven to zero. All right. I want to mention uh, I had a, I've had more than one complaint about the condition of Memorial Boulevard where the potholes were uh, worked on by DOT, and the request was that Paul that perhaps you contact DOT to see if they can do something to remedy that problem. A lot of people get tired of bumping over that. The public needs to understand that wherever it's a state road within the city limits, such as 41, which is Memorial, or Tom Austin Highway with 431, or Fifth Avenue East and West, which is um, uh, State Highway 49, and even 76 out by the high school, all of these are state built and state maintained. We have no authority to, to make improvements to them. But uh, I've had more complaints about Memorial this time than ever before, I believe. So if we could make contact with them. Mr. Nutting and I met with our state representative, Josh Evans, last week at his request to go over some legislation that uh, we had an interest in. And we stated again to him the urgency of trying to get something going on the widening of 431 from more or less from Walgreens out to the creek. And this is now scheduled for funding in the 14, 15 year. And again, we believe it when we see it, but uh, that is critical. What about the, did y'all discuss the Batson Road quarter? We discussed it but it's as not. being number two after, oh. after uh, the 431 thing. Of course, the state's already looking at phase two, I guess you'd say, of 431, which is the part from uh, 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 Cars Creek out to to where it narrows again up mm -hmm. a mile this side of Pebble Brook. Okay. So uh, the worst part, of course, being down the hill past mm -hmm. Pebble Brook. That's not what they're working on yet, but uh, that's the most current report available. Mr. Ellis? I just have a question, uh, I guess. Paul explained that. He, he lost me about halfway through it. But uh, as far as building permits, uh, if someone wants to build a house, or whatever, Are you, do they, because I know they have to get the permit, I understand that. Is that when they find out whether the sewer is adequate or not? Is that Before we actually award a building permit, this is in all circumstances, and it's been going on for a few years, 
we under the code can take three days to make sure that there are no issues with regard to zoning and other matters in this particular case uh, we it is absolutely critical that mr le masters uh, believes that there is going to be no issue with regard to sewer that there's uh, enough capacity and and what have you so um it's going to be more of an issue uh, after we get the capacity assurance plan, but it'd be less in the fact that we'll start making repairs. Well, it needs to be remembered that we're going to gain capacity two ways. We're going to get credits every time we tear down some uh, uh, dilapidated structure that's already been on the sewer system. You're gaining that way. Then you're going to gain when you start these improvements for which we borrowed the money. So you're going to gain in two regards. So we should open up a lot of areas unless you are just in a particular critical zone, such as down there at the foot of Circle Drive, where that uh, really, really bad, uh, oh, that's the best example I can think of of where something is very much uh, a problem. But otherwise, we're, we are moving on this, and we do take this very seriously and intend to open it up just as much as the, as the law will allow us. Paul, did you have anything? Uh, yes, Mayor. I, I had a few things to report, and, and I think, Alan, correct me if I'm wrong, back to the Memorial Boulevard. I think one of the problems why patches don't take on Memorial Boulevard is actually concrete underneath that road, and that's why every time they come and patch that thing, the patches don't hold, and it's an extremely strong road. I don't think they can just go scarify that road up and repave it. If you scarify it, it, you're supposed to be able to, but maybe they didn't scarify it. Late 50s. One or two hours are long, if any, long enough to remember, I guess. You see the white bleeding up. That's the concrete bleeding up through the concrete that's going to be there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Billiard downtown. Anything further? See you on May the May the fourteenth, seven o'clock.